Bonjour, welcome to Florida State University. Thank you. Um, so we're going to do this little interview so you can present your film, The Past is Not Our Future. Um, and um, my first question is, what were the phases making the film? The, the film started out as a project that was being done through the Department of History and Archaeology, the University of West Indies, Mono, where I am, uh, where I'm a professor there. Uh, it's also the place where Walter Rodney, the subject of the film, went to school and did his undergrad. So the idea early on was to try and track Walter Rodney's life as a student. Now that was a good idea to begin with, but it was difficult actually to start to get the work going. Where do you go with that idea? So what we did is that we went straight into the archives and did a lot of research, trying to find what we could about him, that period in his life, trying to understand what that period was like for the Caribbean, which is that period from roughly 1960 to 1963. Now what we, what we discovered, that's myself and the researchers who worked with me on the project, was that there was a lot of material that we had of what student life was like in Jamaica in the early 1960s, but more broadly what the Caribbean was like during that period. So we found photographs, we found uh, essays, we found uh, people who knew Walter Rodney at that point in time and we interviewed them. And then once we got that material, which turned out to be a lot richer than we imagined, we began the process then of assembling it into this film. All right, sounds great, thank you. Um, and why did you pick um, this character? Walter Rodney is perhaps one of the most iconic revolutionary intellectuals to come out of the Caribbean. In fact, he, he defined himself as such. He says that he was a revolutionary intellectual. There's a, a segment in the film where you actually uh, hear through Rodney's writings and his voice how he came about to that sort of realization of what he wanted to be. And he was really well known for several, in his intellectual life, for several publications. The most profound being his magisterial work, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, which is still read and, under, and, and re read many times over uh, because it was one of the first critical treatments of Africa, understanding the nature of what was then referred to as underdevelopment of Africa and the, the role that European powers and colonization played into that. But on the revolutionary side of his life, he's well known as a leader of an uh, uh, opposition party in his native Guyana, the, work, the Workers' Progress Alliance, um, the WPA, and he, he was very instrumental in the opposition against the government at the time, which was run by Forbes Burnham. So he's sort of seen as this very dominant uh, revolutionary figure coming out of the Caribbean who was eventually assassinated in 1980. But at the same time, this profound intellectual who had this long vision, this long vision of understanding the, the development in Africa as well as in the Caribbean. Endlessly fascinating uh, person. And also a person, personally to me, that I drew a lot of inspiration from coming uh, as a historian myself in the Caribbean, in Jamaica, studying at the University of the West Indies, <laughs> Mona, where he studied. Um, I found a tremendous amount of inspiration from, from Walter Rodney. So this period in his life, this early period in his life, when he's just developing as an intellectual, just developing as a revolutionary, was very fascinating to me. And I felt it needed to be told. And I felt that the medium of film would be a great way to tell it. Thank you. Um, and so um, to end up this interview, what is your next project? I'm actually working on a follow-up to this film at the looking at when Rodney came back to Jamaica. So he left Jamaica in 1963 as a student, and he returned as a professor in 1968 to teach African history. And the purpose of that was to, of his arrival, was really to develop a program in African history, which we didn't have at all in the Caribbean at that point in time. Rodney was not someone who was just confined to the ivory tower of the university. He went out beyond the university and taught African history, spoke with people in the community, the Rastafari youth in Jamaica at the time. He spoke to the working class in Jamaica at the time and became very much a proponent of black power and, and how knowledge of Africa and knowledge of the Caribbean past and the Caribbean connection to Africa was an empowering aspect of Caribbean life and identity. And that was seen as, a th uh, as threatening to the government at the time. So only nine months after starting to teach at the university, he was banned by the government. 
and he went away to a conference in Montreal 50 years ago now, because this happened in October 1968. And when he returned to Jamaica, he was met at the airport by government officials who said he could not set foot on Jamaican soil. He was banned and declared persona non grata. The response to that banning was quite immense. It was a turning point politically in Jamaica because the students protested. They heard that he couldn't, uh, he couldn't land. They took to the streets and the street, the, the protest, the student protest, widened and started to include and included rather uh, members of the working class, members of the Rastafari communities, people who had been denied uh, their own sense of rights and identity in Jamaica for a long time, used it as an occasion to sort of voice their, their, their uh, upset at the government. And so that became known as the Rodney Affair or the Disturbances of 1968 or sometimes the, the Rodney Riots of 1968. So right now I'm actually working on a short film that documents that period, um, that period in time, as a sort of tie-in to a conference we're having in Jamaica in October, uh, which is called Confrontations, uh, the Rodney Disturbance of 1968 and student protests. So we're actually looking at the history of student protests in Jamaica, but with a sp special focus on uh, what happened in, in October 1968. So there'll be an exhibition, there'll be a conference, and there'll be this film that we're working on. Great, thank you very much.